Hello, Medford community. I'm Brett Champion, the proud superintendent of schools here in the Medford School District. And welcome to Medford Anywhere Learning TV. We are so grateful to our partners who helped us bring Medford Anywhere Learning TV to life. And those include Southern Oregon PBS, KTVL, KDRV, and The Dove TV. Special shout out to Southern Oregon PBS for also producing these parts. In the Medford School District, we believe that all are learning, and learning is for all. And what better venue to share our learning than Medford Anywhere Learning TV. Welcome. Hi, my name is Mr. Olinkhaus. I'm a teacher over here at Hedrick Middle School, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a bit about brass instruments. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the trumpet, we'll talk about the tuba, the French horn, the trombone, the euphonium, but really all of these techniques um, are going to apply to any 6th grader through 12th grader who would like to produce better tone on their brass instruments and also improve their breathing. So if we had a learning target today, we would say, I can use my breath efficiently and I can produce a good quality tone on my instrument. So with that said, um, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do today is working with our buzz. Um, just getting the buzz activated. Now we could start with breathing, but instead I'd like to go right into the buzz because um, later on our breathing is going to change what our buzz is going to do. All right, so if you want to see a close-up of my lips, what we can do is get the basic mechanics of what's happening when we buzz. So for the trumpet mouthpiece, I don't even need the mouthpiece yet. I'm just going to free buzz for now, but we're going to Im imitate that ring that the mouthpiece has, um, and we're going to pretend it's like right here, and that's where I get this like uh, tight sensation over here in the corners of the mouth, like this. And then we can take our lips you can get that buzzing sound. Now, there is lots to buzzing. Um, a lot of times when you're just starting off, it's hard to change pitch. So you might have only a little bit of range to it. But see if you can get the buzzing to change the pitch. So instead of staying static on one note, see if you can get it to move around. So I started on a pitch, I dropped it by a half step, and then brought it back up to the original pitch. Let me play that for you again. And this time, I'm going to start descending in pitch as I'm doing that little half step pattern. Now I'm going to go to the lower pitch and do the repeat the same pattern again. This is an exercise that I use every time I warm up and play um, my instrument, every time I sit down for a practice session. I'll practice for anywhere between 15 minutes, um, especially for those of you who are in sixth grade, all the way up through uh, sometimes upwards of two to four hours, depending on how long um, and intense what it, in terms of what I'm going for. This little buzzing exercise I'll usually use for about two to five minutes before I play. And it does a couple things for you. It helps you eventually improve your tone quality but it also gives you a little more flexibility inside your lips. And then there's an added bonus that is basically like weight lifting for your lips. Now, trumpet mouthpieces are one thing for you trumpet players. And I want to show you something. Right now it's holding it with three fingers, but eventually you'd like to be able to get to where you can hold it with two fingers. And if you want to go really advanced, see if you can hold it with just your thumb. Make sure you could have your other hand underneath it so that you don't accidentally drop it. But what it does by reducing the amount of fingers that you're holding your mouthpiece with is you're going to um, take the tension off the lips. So I'm going to balance it with one finger.
One of the things that I do with that is I'll repeat that as many as seven times or more. I'll usually go at least seven sequences down um, on that particular note. If you're not sure which note to start off with, try starting with your uh, middle C for trumpet players or French horn players. Start off with your middle C. Or if you're a tuba trombone or a bass clef baritone player, uh, you'll go for your B flat, your low B flat to start. But what happens if we change our mouthpiece out to something larger? So let me go ahead and grab a trombone mouthpiece here. And my trombone mouthpiece is going to, um, it's got a bigger um, bore to it, and it also has a bigger cup size. The cup is inside here. The bore, you have the back bore in here. And then there's actually um, a front bore that's actually right here at the base of the cup, and that's going to be the smallest part of the mouthpiece. Size comparison between the two, um, you can see the trombone mouthpiece is going to be significantly larger than the trumpet mouthpiece. And because of that, we approach the mouthpiece a little bit differently. Where the trumpet mouthpiece was more tight, the trombone mouthpiece is going to be a little bit bigger and more relaxed as we use more of the lips here. Here's what the trombone mouthpiece is going to sound like on that same exercise. Uh -huh. Three finger grip. Two finger grip. And then ideally, one finger grip. Um, that's where you want to get to. Let's go one more size down. So we have a tuba mouthpiece now. Now, compared to the trombone mouthpiece, it's a bit bigger. And compared to the trumpet mouthpiece, it's quite a bit bigger. So you can see the bore size on all these is very different. All right. Tuba mouthpiece, same exercise. <laughs> Would be the trombone range. We're going to drop it another octave down. <laughs> So you can continue this exercise just as though you were free buzzing. The free buzzing version of the tuba one gets kind of fun though because it allows us to see what the lips are actually doing when we're buzzing. What a lot of people think is that the lips open and close like a gate as they buzz, but that's actually not true. They actually make an oscillating motion. It's almost like a little wave. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So the next thing we're going to try is just the free buzzing, but I want to show you a cool little trick about the lips in terms of what's happening with them. When we do the high, highest pitch buzzes for uh, trumpets and French horns, you get this real tight buzz. It's very hard to see the lips moving at all. The middle range buzz, like trombone, you can see the lips starting to uh, blur just a little bit. But as we go lower, the lips start opening up. And you'll see a little aperture is that little hole that's actually in between my lips where the air is passing through. It's going to start getting bigger and bigger. Then let's get into the tuba range. You can really start seeing the lips move. That's exactly what's happening with the trumpet and the French horn and the trombone, just on a smaller scale with the lips. So if we go all the way down, you get a real funny looking buzz. Let me see if I can slow down the buzz for you though in real time. I'm going to play with the frames per second on the camera and I'm going to try and buzz in a synchronized fashion with them. So you're going to see the lips look like they almost have like a strobe like effect to them. Here's what that looks like.
So you can see that as they start slowing down, you get that oscillating motion, that wave-like motion to them. And that really makes a big difference in terms of how we approach um, our instruments, is understanding that our lips actually need to be separated. We don't want them actually closing off. The difference in sound there is something like this. For a trumpet versus more open. Versus too open. All right, if we attach that to a mouthpiece now, this is going to be a little bit different. Here's the uh, too tight buzz. The lips are going to be squished together. Here's the just right buzz. Here's the too open buzz, like the airy buzz. Sometimes when you hear somebody who's like picking up the trumpet for the first time, you'll hear the really airy buzz. <laughs> That's the lips being too open. So there's a sweet pot spot in here. There's um, a balance in everything we do in music. You can always go too soft, too loud, too hard, too gentle. In this case, with the mouthpiece, you can be too open or too closed. We want to find that sweet spot for each part of the range. Now, as you get lower in the range, that aperture or sweet spot is going to gradually open up further and further. <laughs> And you can see that those lips are gradually relaxing. But what's not relaxing is the corners here. The corners, you always want to keep them pretty firm no matter where you are in the range. Even on the tuba, I'm still pretty much going to keep the corners in the same spot as I do on the trumpet. It's over two and a half octaves of difference, but the corners are still the same. It's really these inner lips that are really making all the difference. And those are the same lips. If you're not sure what part of the lips I'm talking about, try saying with a smile, a very firm smile, mama, mama. So some people call these the mama muscles. And these are the ones that are doing all of the work. And these are the same uh, muscles that you need to exercise on a daily basis. The next set of exercises I would like to show you are ones that I've used ever since I was in middle school and I love them because they do two major things. For one, they're going to increase your lung capacity. And the second great thing about these exercises is they allow you to increase the efficiency of your air use. So for this one, I do need to put out a little bit of a disclaimer though. If you are doing these exercises with me, and I certainly invite you to do that, uh, be careful if you have asthma or a breathing condition. Um, that can be triggered by some of these exercises. So if you have asthma, make sure to have an inhaler nearby and take it easy. Don't push yourself too far. Um, go to wherever you feel comfortable. Um, if you start getting dizzy, uh, go ahead and take a seat if you're standing up. Um, sitting down is probably a better choice for this next uh, set of exercises. All right, the first one, um, some of you band guys who are in high school, you might already know this. Some of you middle schoolers, hopefully you've heard about it. But let's go ahead and get started. The first one is taking in breaths, holding them, and then releasing them. So for the first one, we're going to let all of our air out. And then breathe in with me over four counts. Ready? Hold it. And release. And out. And relax. Now there's a few things you want to do while you're doing this. When you're inhaling, imagine that you're breathing in through a straw, but the straw is about the size of a quarter. So instead of going like, instead you're going to go. Now, you'll see my shoulders move up a little bit. See if you can minimize how much your shoulders scrunch up. Take your shoulders right now and roll them back and relax. There you go. And now let's try it again. Let all your air out. Breathe in on four. Hold it, and out. So I'm filling my lungs all the way up from the base of my lungs, which are, um, hang right here. You'll see I'm, I had this black sweater on. They're, the lungs hang right about here on up. 
a lot of people think the lungs are actually lower down because our bellies move a lot when we breathe. But that's actually your diaphragm muscle, which is like a giant billows that's pushing the air up and sucking it back down as well. So we want to play around with those muscles a little bit. Can you think about letting your diaphragm relax all the way? And then take a big sip of air in, like you're surprised. You feel that fill up all the way. Let's go ahead and try this exercise one more time now. This time we're going to breathe in for four counts, hold it for four counts, but then instead of letting it out, you're going to take a sip of air in and cap off your lungs because you're actually using some of the oxygen in your lungs that's getting absorbed in your body as you're holding it. And we're going to refill your lungs all the way up. And this is the part that starts expanding the size of the lungs. We're going to force the lungs very gently to gradually over time get larger and larger. There's no instant results with this. This is just like weightlifting. You have to give it time and repetition. Do this every day though, and you'll have much, much bigger lungs that are much more powerful. One way you can test this is by blowing into a balloon and seeing how big you can get the balloon. You could always measure the diameter or the circumference of that balloon, get an idea of just how much um, air you're blowing into it. Grab a fresh balloon the next time. I don't recommend using the same one day after day though. That's kind of gross, don't you think? All right. Let's go ahead and try breathing again. All your air out. Breathe in on four. Hold it. Sip in. And out. You could also exhale on a hiss, like a tss, and see if you can get more air resistance and force the air out. That's an impressive thing your lungs can do if you can push all your air out on a hiss in four counts. All right, one more time. This time we're going to hold it for eight counts, sip in, hold it for four more counts, sip in, hold it for four more counts, and then exhale. And we could practice with the hiss this time. All your air out. Get ready. This one will be big. <sighs> Breathe in. Hold it. Sip in, sip in, and out. You see, I couldn't get all my air out in four counts. Of course, I forgot to hiss there for a second too. All right, next thing with this, let's increase the efficiency of our air. That last exercise, by the way, I should say, I'll do that for upwards again, maybe five minutes, just working on that one exercise, seeing how long I can hold my breath and keep sipping the air in and forcing my lungs to constantly expand. After a while, it may make you giggle. You get a little lightheaded. Again, be careful if you have asthma and also take a seat if you are feeling dizzy. Um, all right, next exercise is figuring out how to pull in as much air as possible and then exhale it as quickly as possible as well. This is about, can you take a sip of air in if you only have a brief moment of time, maybe an eighth rest, and you want to get a full uh, breath of air? Could you do it in a 16th rest? Could you do it in a 32nd rest? Well, there's a point where you just can't fill your lungs up fast enough. What I love about this next exercise is it allows you to see if you can expand those lungs um, all the way as quickly as possible and then express that air out as quickly as possible as well. So we're going to start by breathing in, just like the last one on four counts, nice relaxed breath, and then breathe out on that same, um, like you have a quarter size straw. All right, let's try this. All you're out, breathe in. All right, you did it. Now here's the bad news. You probably exhaled all your air way faster than you were able to inhale it. So this time, see if you can change the aperture size so that it's smaller on the exhale so you can make it go in four counts. Ready? Inhale over four counts and then exhale over four counts. Bring all your air in and then get all your air out. Let the air out first and breathe in over four. Were you able to get it out in four? If so, good job. Now the next trick, do it in three. Ready? Breathe in over three counts and then out in three. Do it in two. Ready? Can you do it in one? Again, you might start getting lightheaded. 
Now, in one, were you able to fill your lungs up all the way? Or can you get more? Can you relax your body, your upper torso? Ah. Roll your shoulders back. Stretch out if you need to. Ready? In and one, out and one. But this time, instead of stopping, keep going. See if you can do a set of eight. It's kind of like doing reps while doing weightlifting. Here you go. Breathe in. Feeling a little lightheaded yet? The next trick would be, could you do 16, 30, 60? How long could you do that before you feel like you're going to pass out? You have to be careful, again, if you have um, asthma, you, this, this can easily, it's like hyperventilating, so you want to be careful about that. If you're feeling lightheaded, make sure to take a seat. I can't in, express how important that is. Take care of your body first. Safety always comes first. All right. Uh, with that second exercise, I'll do that until I can't do it anymore. A place that you can use uh, practice, have you ever tried blowing up an air mattress using just your breath? You could start small, try a balloon, right? How fast can you blow up a balloon? Like, you know, don't suck the air back in, but keep expressing air back into the balloon. How quickly can you do that? Then move up to a, maybe a beach ball then maybe a giant like life ring that you could put into a pool. And then maybe one day you can get all the way to the point where you could spend a half hour trying to blow up an air mattress. It's pretty intense. I hope you have fun with those. The next part of this lesson is about being able to apply your breathing and your buzz to the tone quality on your instrument. And something we need to understand is that this works slightly different for different brass instruments and it's going to work slightly different depending on what part of the range in the brass instrument you're in. But there's a few fundamentals. That buzz has to be free and the air has to flow. Free the buzz, let the air flow. All right, we're going to start off today with a trumpet. See if I have one here behind my desk. All right, so the trumpet, um, for this one, we are going to start using that same exercise we did earlier with the buzzing, where you start on a pitch, go down by a half step, and then come back up. Now, just a reminder for all you who are brass players, your chromatic pattern, this is my first valve, second valve, third valve, your chromatic pattern is open, second, first, first and second, second and third, first and third, and then one, two, and three all together. Why don't we just use third alone? Well, we actually do, but only for a few special notes um, because it has a different tuning than one and two, even though both of them drop the pitch by three half steps from an open fingering. Trombone players, you know what to do. This is really easy. You have positions one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This couldn't get easier for you. But for everybody else, just remember your chromatic pattern. Open, second, first, first, second, second, third, one and three, one, two, and three. I'm going to use that chromatic pattern as I descend down. Remember to keep the middle of the lips relaxed, but the corners firm. And then also remember, stay relaxed in your body. Use lots of air within balance. Here we go. <sighs> So that one I started on a trumpet's middle C. If you're a French horn player wanting to play a long pitch, this is your F because that's all a concert B flat. Treble clef baritone, that's also your C. And then everybody else, that's your uh, regular B flat, open B flat. Okay, let's try this again and we're going to go further down. This time I'm going to start on second, go to first, and then back to second. <laughs> I'm going half note, half note, whole note for those of you who are keeping tabs at home. If you're a trumpet player and you're saying, hey, how come I can't play a little bit higher? Why are we playing so low? Then I'm going to tell you this. The trick to playing high is to build up strength down low. Playing high is kind of like max lifting and weight lifting. 
it kind of burns your muscles out real quick. If you do lower amounts of weights with um, those more reps, then you're going to build those muscles in a better way because you're just breaking them down a little bit each day and then they build back up with more strength, right, the next day. Versus if you're always trying to play as high as possible every day, you're not going to get very far because you're burning the muscles out. They, it actually tears the little muscle fibers apart. And if you do it day after day, um, day after day after day, it really causes a problem because you actually never have a chance for your lips to recover. And you actually get worse and weaker. And then you resort to using more pressure and pushing more. And that's why I still want to recommend See if you can get to a two-finger technique when you're buzzing. All right, I'm going to swap up instruments just a little bit after I show the trumpet players. For the higher range, yes, you do have to keep this tight in here, but this middle part is going to start getting tight as well. The hard part is keeping it supple enough to get flexible with your pitch without losing your tone quality. Right? As you're coming up higher, don't pinch the muscles too much and don't open them up too much. It's about finding that middle ground in there. French horn players, you're up next. Let me see if I have a French horn back here. There we go. There's my trusty French horn. Now, I should mention the instruments I'm using today aren't fancy ones. These are student instruments. French horn players, same idea as trumpets. <laughs> starting on middle C and working your way down. French horn players, you have a trick because you have to play over four different octaves on the French horn eventually. But so just like trumpet players, get used to playing with that higher tone quality, not too pinched, not too relaxed. I missed my note, did you hear that? I'm gonna play it again and make sure I can start it right on. I don't wanna practice that hitting that note incorrectly. Again, just like the trumpets, it gets more tense um, in that middle of the lips as you get higher, but you have to keep it relaxed enough to maintain flexibility. Let's see what other uh, instruments I got back here. Ah, the trusty euphonium. This one here, I'm going to be a little more relaxed as I'm playing through. <laughs> As you play in the higher range, yes, you tense up, but really the baritone trombone, they stay relaxed all throughout. All right, let's go to the tuba next. Sorry, trombone players, I'm leaving you out because guess what? You're too close to the euphonium. <laughs> all right, the tuba is going to get a little more wild. Because on here, we have to be able to uh, play in a very relaxed style. And you can hear when it gets, the lips get a little too tight because you get kind of that kind of wobbly sound. You can hear that kind of warped sound. That's from me being too tight. I'm going to relax now. As you get down into the pedal tones, get real relaxed. I hope this helps with your daily exercise routines on your brass instruments. I hope you all have a wonderful time practicing. Don't forget, always play something for fun. All right, for MSD TV, I'm Mr. Olinghouse, and we'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining us today on Medford Anywhere Learning TV. For the latest updates on what's going on in the Medford School District, including COVID-19 updates, as well as next steps for Medford Anywhere Learning, because there's always more still to come, check out our website at www.medford.k12.or.us. See you soon.